Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 24 of the Legal Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. Uh, I am just going to keep it short today. I'm not going to lie. I ran eight miles in the heat. That's one, but I also played softball in the morning where I ran a lot. Um, and But the critical part is that uh, it rained last night. I slipped on the grass and I hurt my shoulder a little bit. So, like, doing this hurts. Uh, uh, I don't know. Just getting old and everything kind of hurts. Also pull my groin a little bit. So I'm just going to get rest after this. So let's, uh, let's dive right into it. Hope everyone's having a good weekend, uh, or, you know, good start to the week. But man, I am struggling today. All right, let's take a look. 995 minimum number of K consecutive bit flips. You're given a binary array nums and an injured K. A K bit flip is choosing a sub array length of length K from Nums and simultaneously changing every zero in the bit in the sub array to one, and every one is like, okay. Return the number minimum number of k bit flips required so that there's no zero in the array. If it's not possible, you turn negative one. That's kind of funny because uh, well, n is ten to the fifth, k is pretty big, but um, but yeah, the the thing I would say is that. Uh, it, it's kind of funny because it is, if you did the, um, I almost said virtual contest, but you did the weekly contest. I think it's the weekly contest, right? Let me double check. Or well, maybe it was the bi-weekly. Um, but if you did one of the contests, one of the, yeah, uh, is minimum operations to make binary, you go to one, which is the same thing except for the two versions. One is K is equal to three, so very specific. And then the other one is, um, or the suffix starting from this point, which is also uh, a more specific case. And therefore, both of them are medium. And this one's hard for that reason. But the idea is still going to be the same. Uh, if uh, I definitely recommend if you struggle with this problem, uh, take a look at those two. Um, I think, let's take a look at what the numbers are. Yeah, take a look at these two first and work through it. And if you have issues, you can... Um, Look, I watched the video. Yesterday, I was in a little bit better health, so I think I was more detailed about going through these two problems. So definitely check that out. But the key thing to observe here is that, okay, let's say we're given an array, and it doesn't matter what K is for now. Uh, given an array, uh, this is the array, right? And let's say, uh, are we turn from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0? Okay, so we, we want it to be all 1s. Right? So that means that if we look at, the, it doesn't matter what the K is, but if the first number is zero, then what do you want to do? Well, there's only one, there's no choice, right? You're forced in a way. It, there's no decision because if this is a zero, in order for the entire way to be ones, you have to flip this one. Right? So then what does that mean? Well, it depends on K. You have to flip the next whatever. But in a real, in a, in a, in a way though, let's say K is equal to five. Then now when you get to the next zero, this is still true because, um, you cannot, because everything to the left of it, you assume is one, so you, you cannot change it because you cannot change it without, you know, yet changing it again, which doesn't make sense. Um, another way to think about it is just like, you know, uh, uh, chopping it off. So then now you have to force to do it, you see a zero, that, and now you only um, choose to do it at the beginning, right? <clears throat> As the beginning of your K flips. Um, so yeah, so again, if, you wanna, if you're curious about the K is equal to three Ks, uh, that's one of the, that's, that's this one, 3191. And I think for the entire suffix case, three, excuse, oh, excuse me, 3192 will be good. But for this one, we have a variable K, which makes it a little bit different. Because then now, let's say you have this idea deep in your mind, and you're like, okay, well, it becomes a, a problem of, okay, how do I handle things in a way such that, um, Yeah, how do you handle things in a way such that, you know, um, you can handle K at a time? Sorry, I'm, oh man, I'm, I'm wait, I think I'm also dehydrated a little bit. But yeah, uh, and the, the, here, the idea here is just thinking about it in terms of 
in a way, uh, you could call it a different array or a prefix sum maybe, but the idea here is that, uh, um, let's say you're flipping this bit, then now, then ev every, it's about kind of combining the, uh, the idea of um, 3192, right, the, the suffix one. And the idea here is that, okay, so, so basically we, if we see a one, or oh, sorry, if we see a zero, we want to, we want to flip the next k bits, right? So the idea becomes, uh, what, what data structure do you want to do? <coughs> and it turns out the way that to do it is just kind of, um, okay, I think I have a way to explain it. Sorry, I was just struggling a little bit um, to figure out how to explain this, um, uh, what I have in my head. And I'm going to just draw it out. Um, keeping in mind uh, that all all this all these videos are taped live. I don't know the problems ahead of time, etc. Right. So that's why some of the, some of the times these things are a little bit sloppy as a result because I don't have it planned out. Uh, if you want to plan out, there are other videos for it. So you know you don't need me. It's that's why I do it this way. But here is the array say right with a lot of elements. And then now, let's say you have something of k length k. So let's say here we have a zero. So now we want to uh, do k bits, right? And then what if after flipping, the next number is zero again? Then now we flip this one, uh, the next k. And then maybe we have a couple of ones, we're good. And then we have a zero. And then we have to flip this k, right? And they're all k's. So then the idea here with this visualization is that now you can just think about them as segments. And as segments, then now there are, double, there are a couple of ways you can think about how to approach this. And of course, if you have, in this case, like three things, that means that only one of them count, right? So you can kind of keep track of things that way. Um, and yeah, and the way that I would do it is that, okay, let's say if num sub i is equal to zero, that means we have to flip, flip the next k bits, including this one. So it's easy to get off by one, but the idea itself is not that bad, which is that now, um, so maybe we have the idea of flipped is equal to zero, right? And here we flip the next k bits. Uh, we have a flip, so we have to flip this one, right? So we here, we, um, yeah, we flip this. Or uh, maybe, yeah, let's just say this is false. And then now this is equal to not flip, right? But then we want, want to make sure that after K, it goes out. Well, it's, the way that I can think about it is just doing another event, right? Which is that, um, let's just say, uh, let's just call it out, maybe. Uh, dot append I, right? And that's pretty much it, really. Uh, and of course, we have to do an operation. So this is count to the one. Right? And maybe out is going to be equal to a deck. And then now, if length of out is greater than zero, and out sub i is equal to, oh sorry, out sub zero, the beginning of the queue is equal to i, then we, um, well, we pop it but we also flip it right because now this is done maybe i'm off by one but that's the general idea right yeah and then at the end <clears throat> if if we try to flip uh out then we return negative one otherwise we just return count right like i said i think this is mostly why i may be off by one but that's basically the idea Right, uh, hmm. So k is equal to 1. What does this mean? Oh, why, why did I always do this plus k? Wow, I just forgot the k. But also k minus 1. So we went off by 1, we were off by a lot as a result. But, um, yeah, wait. We want it to the next instance. So this is actually, yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay, because we want it to be. Do, 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 do. Uh, 
you go to N, then we can pop. If that's still not enough, then then it is zero. Right? Okay. Why am I getting this one? Hmm. Maybe I'm doing something sloppy with outs, which is prob possible, probable. Uh, five. Five is definitely way wrong, though. Oh, I'm just being dumb. <clears throat> Man, I, I... Sorry, friends. My head is just not in it today. I'm just so tired and everything hurts. But, uh, but yeah, I, I didn't do... This is just checked if it's zero, so it doesn't really do anything. Uh, it just counts the number of zero in the thing. But, um... Yeah, that's why I kind of did it this way, I think, right? Eh, I'm just not thinking today. Uh, don't be intimidated by the XOR. It doesn't really do anything. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's give it a quick submit. Hopefully I, I'm not too wrong. And there we go. Uh, yeah, let's go over this by code. I know that when I wrote it out, I usually exp do a better job explaining, but again, my apologies. My head is just a little bit weird today, uh, but still going to grind it out, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, so let's just go over the code. So basically, this is saying that, okay, this is, to, if, if we kind of use the visualization that we drew out, this is on the, the outside, right? So that means that if we kind of look at this visualization, uh, when, we, when we see a zero, we also put into out. Uh, this thing right so that we can flip it back to where it was when it's done and sp more specifically it is one space afterwards which is why we have a uh, we have a plus k um, and not plus k minus one or something right um, and this is and this is pretty uh, straightforward after that this is just that if it's zero um, and we don't flip it then this is going to be a zero so then you know uh, if this is, and you could do this in Boolean statements, basically, if it's flipped and this is zero, or if this is, uh, or if this is flipped is one and this is one, then you flipped it to zero, so that's why you flipped the next k bits. Um, here, it's a little bit hacky looking, but, uh, it makes sense to me. Uh, you probably could have used a sentinel as well, but the idea here is that, okay, if there's an, if there are any outs left, F, um, and uh, uh, and the last item is n. It just shows that well. Uh, you could even illustrate in this case, right? In example one, if the last number is zero, it just means that the number after the last number is gonna be the outside, right? Um, and the reason why this is important to kind of keep track is that if this is still greater than zero, that means that you try to do something out of bounds. And what I mean by that is that if you look at example three, if you try to, I don't actually, this is kind of a bad example, but let's say you have uh, an input of just like one, 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 zero, and k is equal to two. And if you try to flip this one, then here it would, it would go out, outs would contain something that you can pop, which is like two indexes outside the array, right? So that's basically why I wrote it this way. Um, yeah. And of course, this is going to be linear time, uh, linear space due to the deck. And yeah, um, is it true? I guess technically it's all k space, but that's gonna be linear in the worst case. So yeah. <sighs> so I, 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 I'm uh, today. I'm just having a rough time. So that's all I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna go to bed right after this. So yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay good. Stay healthy. To good mental health. Maybe I should have done this in the morning, but I'll see y'all later. Take care. Bye bye.